focus of this session is on STEAM education. Now, I know not all of us work within the field of STEAM, so just a quick definition. STEAM is an acronym for the integrated teaching or studies of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So now that you know what we, what we will be talking about, let me introduce uh, you to our speakers. Firstly, from the University of Helsinki, we've got Professor Yari Lovonen. From Fino School, Ms. Pia Loom. And then from the Ministry of Education in Finland, Mr. Yoni Kangas Niemi. I truly hope I didn't butcher that too much. Um, I'm going to ask our first speaker uh, to address uh, the audience, and then um, thereafter we will move on with the panel. Thank you very much, Professor. So dear friends, it's my great honor and pleasure to be here again. It's, I think, it's my sixth time here in Soveto and in this Uzapula school. I al always enjoy the people and the warm weather and everything, nice food. <laughs> okay, in three minutes, STEAM education in Finland. So I would like to underline the idea that the big aims, the more precise objectives than the practices and assessment are in line. So what, what already Maria Haapaniemi emphasized, so what we need in future, that was the crucial question when we were planning our current new framework curricula. In the very beginning, there is kind of outline what are the key competencies for future. And then the objectives in each school subject, also in STEM, STEAM school subjects, are in line with that. So as Maria emphasized, we, we should ask what kind of thinking is important in future. At the university, we learn critical thinking. We are always very critical, arguing, asking evidence. But what, what we need more is creative way of thinking. And this is very crucial in STEAM education, design and, and, and making something. And in addition, we also need metacognitive thinking or learning to learn skills. We live older and, and we need to learn many new things during our life. Then we are asking what kind of working or learning we need in future. Collaboration is very important, inquiry orientation, problem solving. What are the tools? Of course, the digital tools, but also the literature is important. Our new framework emphasizes the literature, broad literature. What are the context? We are not living only in the, in the local context. The global context is important. And, and I would like to also emphasize the attitude. We should trust ourselves. We should have high self-efficacy. We should think that these are the problems we are meeting, we are able to overcome. Uh, positive self-concept. So they are the big aims in our curriculum. And then we come to the STEAM education objectives. We emphasize the practices the scientists, engineering are doing. Asking question, forming a question or problem, Planning investigation or planning an artifact, collecting data, looking for evidence, arguing. They are the scientific and engineering practices. They are emphasized in the curriculum. They are more emphasized than the subject knowledge. Of course, the disciplinary core ideas, what is core in its discipline, that, that is emphasized. And also the cross-cutting concepts, how the subjects are connected to each other. And, and for example, the so-called phenomena-based approach is, is supporting this kind of connection of the important concept in, 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 in the area of phenomena. So the implementation, so aims, objectives, implementation. It's important to emphasize that the student is in the center. He or she should be active in knowledge construction. The knowledge practices, asking questions, planning, doing, what the engineering are doing, what the scientists are doing, collaboration, 
and an artifact. Typically, learning is organized around an artifact. It could be a document, it could be a concept map, it could be a robot, a code, whatever. So we are doing something around an artifact. What, ha what, what we have, we have made research on that kind of learning, collaboration, knowledge practices, building knowledge. We have emphasized the practices and we have recognized that while students are engaging in those practices, they are really more engaged in learning of STEM subjects. Typically students, based on the huge data we have, more than 40,000 measurements in real classroom situations, typically students are engaged in 10 to 14 percent of the situations. But when they engage in those practices, it's 25, 30 percent of the situations they are engaged in learning. So learning is emphasized in our country, so engagement in learning is important. And then the assessment, teacher conducted assessment should be in line with that. Teachers are emphasizing those topics they have been doing with students in the classroom in the assessment. So th that should be supportive for the learning. Very shortly, the STEAM education in Finland. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, and dear colleagues, I'm Pia Lume from Finna School. Uh, my background is I have been a, for 15 years a class teacher and a subject teacher in a Finland. And nowadays I offer the in-service training for teachers in Finland and in abroad. And hopefully sometimes here in, in, in South Africa. Uh, at the first, I have to say to you, because I love so much music, so I was just crying in the beginning of this visiting. I, I think that this was the, the best part of this visiting was the singing there, the core. And many, many greetings to your pupils of that. And it has been my pleasure to be on this journey to get to know more about your education in South Africa. This has been the first time here. Thanks for you. Uh, my presentation focuses on uh, mathematical identity. So uh, we speak about a research of education about mathematical self-concept. And you know, you have, had an, you have been in a different school and you have had in different teachers. And uh, uh, we wa I want to be a little bit uh, think about that, that. How can we support uh, our identity, mathematical identity as a teacher? Uh, and how we can support our thinking skills that's uh, uh, Professor Lavonen a little bit uh, speak about. It's also that kind of we have to emphasize in the future and now today. Uh, when I was a small kid, numbers and figures were fun for me. We set the 10 wooden sticks on the board with our neighbor children and someone of us kicked the board spreading the sticks around. One of us was the dad who collected the 10 sticks set them back to board and start searching all others of us from hiding places. I think you know that game. When I went to school at the age of seven, uh, we got math books with a lo lot of numbers and there was also the green and red apples. We count them together. We counted, uh, we, the learning math was easy and fun with encouraging teacher for me. All nine years we studied from Blackboard, used only books and fill in the notebooks. In high school, I got a teacher who wanted to do all students excellent in math. I was not able to do it. And I was urged to choose the basic course in math. At the university in Helsinki, I was studying there uh, as a class teacher. I was lucky to get a math lecturer who taught math through discussion, experimentation, creative problem solving skills training. And the mere answer was not valid but it had to be justified by concrete models. I was really excited about math again. This wise pedagogue was able to make clear for all of us what the learner-based learning is all about. I began to understand that mathematical identity needs to be built by myself, but a good teacher can support and guide the learner's individual learning path and make math versatile and interesting. In Supos, there are many people in this room who have a positive understanding uh, and mathematical identity of math as a subject. 
In this case, studying mathematics and science is a personal interesting thing, involving questioning, wondering, learning together, mistaken and sharing of one's expertise, utilizing expert critical interpretation of knowledge, and a big variety of other mathematical th thinking skills. Learning can be defined as learning and practicing of own different learning, uh, learning skills as well as part of lifelong learning path. The Finnish national curriculum is in basic education, emphasize transversal learning rather than broad learning. The emergence of values, attitudes, working skills, self-image and self-knowledge, not just individual knowledge grains. In order to create mathematical thinking, the teacher should use concrete examples of everyday mathematics suitable for each age. Encourage pupils to set goals for themselves and evaluate their own skills and knowledge and uh, use also the self-evaluation and peer-to-peer evaluation. I'm now training a teacher with whom I want to share the best practices and thus develop the success specific skills and pedagogical skills. Two weeks ago, we organized a training session with the Finland Science Education Center on functional mathematics and pupils' involvement. We used Lego, scales, robots, sticks, bo balls, bottles, pencils, papers, and we concretized with the teachers how mathematical problems of science everyday life can develop mathematical thinking skills. One group of teachers was solving, uh, for example, how the impacts of the free Finnish school meals on students' well-being can be measured. What a big question. We noticed that we had a make a little research, for example, to combine figures, conclude, apply, evaluate, justify, open mathematical concepts, question, measure, and form, expression, etc. One teacher say after the workshop, workshop, I have to really change my mindset of mathematics. I have to give my students more opportunities, opportunities to discuss math, math concepts. Uh, use the right concepts. Find different solutions, share their skills, evaluate their own skills. I say that, why that? Haven't you done that all? Not so much, he answered. Because I want to develop my teaching skills. Uh, because that they would not think that there is only one correct answer given by a teacher or textbook. As much as we can influence, I hope we can build a positive mathematical self-image and identity as well as versatile learning skills to build the best future for our children in Finland in South Africa. Kiala Buha. Thank you. Dula <laughs> Habushi. I have learned two words in Sesotho. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a very in intensive panels, and my task is to try to pull some of the strings together before we end. Uh, STEAM education, how is it promoted in Finland? As you've heard, the main document, how we promote education and steer education in Finland is through national core curricula. In the old days, it was said that that was the pla safest place to deposit your $100 or 100 euro bill in between the sheets and then put it on your bookshelves because nobody never opened it. <laughs> but today it's more like a living document and we see that as an important tool for the teachers how to do the education. Uh, how we de develop the national core curricula, it's done in very broad cooperation with teachers, students, parents, working life, uh, civic organizations, just to name a few. And STEAM education is seen as an important part of in our society. It's dealt in three ways. As a subject, we have these mathematics, sciences, technologies. They are discussed what are the outcomes that we expect the schools to have in place when they educate our learners. 
Then the second place where the STEAM is involved is that we have these transversal learning themes uh, inside the curricula. It's dealt in learning skills, having critical things, using multiliteracies, using technologies. They are not definitely, they are not um, independent subjects, but themes that are discussed broadly in our education. And the third place, we've al already heard also the concept of phenomena-based learning. That's something that we try to introduce in our system that as a part of your study, you select one topic, like it could be like water, it could be like environment, it could be whatever. But you let the, the learners to decide how to deal that question. And then they just fill in the different views to that. And we've noticed that STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics, are always involved in those project work. And if I just want to conclude, it's not the national core curricula that's steered, but it's also translated in the local level so that it's all accepted by the teachers. It's developed, designed so that every, every teacher in the schools understand what is required for, for their part of the work. But again, very warm thanks for this opportunity. Thank you very, very much to the panel. If I can quickly summarize, when we look at South Africa in STEAM education, what doesn't really exist, we tend to teach in silos with science on the one side, mathematics on the other. Where the focus seems to me in Finland is that there should be integration by showing children the connectedness of what is in the real world. If we think about our grade threes that are currently in the system, in 10 years from now, they will be finished with their education. I always ask myself, what will the world look like in 2027? How are we equipping the learners? Which skills are we aiding them in developing so that when they reach the real world, that it's not in little boxes for them, that they could see the real world and the connections in there, but more importantly, that they're not focused only on the content, but they know how to shape the future where we all will live in. Thank you very much for the um, efficiency and sticking to the time. I will now call on our next panel to uh, please uh, come onto the stage. Thank you very much. It, is, it has been a, about five year journey. I'm sure we have both learned a lot. So it, it happened about exactly five years ago, they, people were visiting my office and also the teacher training school. Elizabeth and Nadine and Sarah come to Helsinki and they, are, they were eager to familiarize how we are organizing teaching practice, how we are supporting student teachers to learn from practice, not just doing practice, but learn to learn how to teach, how to assess, how to plan, but also how to continuously learn, improve your teaching students' learning in the classroom. So we start collaboration. We recognize that is something we are both interested. We start collaboration. We organized common courses for teachers here in the teacher training school, teaching school, for, for learning more about reflection, supervision. That, is, that, that was something in Finland we already know because we have had 40 year experiences of having teaching schools in our universities. So we were sharing our experiences. In the very beginning, we also decided to engage in research activities. So in this picture, the Kusabulek school is very familiar to you, and our Viki teacher training school is on the left hand side. They are the, just the buildings, but now I'm focusing more what's going on inside the buildings. Um, we have had aims, of course, and objectives for teaching practice. 
typically in Finland, the teaching practice have been divided to two phases. Uh, one, the first phase is the introduction, and also student teachers become familiar how to teach, how to learn, how to teach, how to support students to learn a specific school topics in, inside the school subjects. A little bit old-fashioned way, but anyway, starting from the little bit friendly, friendly way for the students. Here are the objectives for this teaching practice, for this the sort of third, first teaching practice in Helsinki and here in, in, in Soveto. There are very much common. So that it's, it's very important that the student teachers recognize what are the students already, what they already know, what they are, what kind of conceptions and what kind of thinking they have in the field the teacher is aiming to teach, support students to learn. Also, a broad view to the planning processes, implementation, assessment, assessment of student learning outcomes, and also assessment of own teachers' own working. And, and collaboration, to do things together, plan together, implement together, co-teaching, and these kind of things are important. So, we can see the lot of similarities in our aims. So, what was coming out? through this five-year process. We, we designed a questionnaire. We designed also an interview protocol in order to understand what students really learn during the teaching practice. There were a lot of challenges in, in making a common questionnaire. We made the trials. We interviewed students how they interpret the questions because the context are very different. The language we use is very different. In the very beginning, for example, the Krumpa Alpha, measuring how well this, uh, the reliability of the questioner, how well it is measuring what we are aiming to measure, what kind of interpretations do. It was quite low. We have to renew the quest. It was very hard work we have go through. I'm, I'm not going now through all the answers. And, and also, we, we should understand that there are differences how students interpret the scale. The scale was very easy. Students were asked, what is your opinion? How much you feel you learn this topic? And the scale, not at all, very much. So it is a simple scale, and the interpretation is different. So actually, in my opinion, it, it is not very much, it's not possible to say very much about the learning based on the student's self-evaluation because they are interpreting, even we are aiming to have sim similar, similar uh, meaning with the questions, similar understanding of the scale, there are still variation how students interpret. We designed the question uh, based on the Sulman's old model. Sulman is emphasizing the subject knowledge pedagogical content knowledge, what we in Finland call didactics, and also the general pedagogical knowledge, contextual knowledge, knowledge about the learners, and, and so on. There are many fields of teacher knowledge. So these are the questions, some examples about the pedagogical content knowledge. How students feel in Finland, blue color, orange in South Africa, what they learn about curriculum knowledge and, and, and so on. So you can see that there are information, there's information if there is statistically significant differences between the interpretation of our own learning. So in some questions, fin Finnish students feel learn more, but for example, knowledge about learning of specific concepts, the students here in South Africa learn more. So actually we are not able to say other differences. It looks there are not so much differences about the learning. So we, our feeling was, has been, and is still that the, in the, that the transfer of Finnish style teacher training school to the Soveto teaching school have been very successful. So this, at least the students are learning in a similar way, because the aims are quite similar. And in, in many areas, the there are no differences how the students interpret their learning. For example, teaching classes with diverse learners, it's important area. Instruction models and strategies, 
classroom communication and discourse, classroom management and discourse. They are what, what are mentioned in the Schulman's model belong to the general pedagogical knowledge. So that's why we were also interviewed. So there were, first, there were about 100 students answering those questionnaires in, in Finland and in Sovereign. And, but we were also interviewing. And the interviewing were telling us very interesting story. In, in, in big picture, the students were asked very broadly, could you please elaborate what you have learned during your teaching practice? So we, we find a lot of similarities with the sti students' stories, what they have learned. And I, I'm not reading those examples, but, but you have time to read, bit read and, and have a look for that. But learners' previous knowledge was equally emphasized in the answers, and also the role of classroom communication, what is the meaning of that, was emphasized. In, in some level, the South African students Soviet students were more successful combining their stories to the theoretical point of views. They emphasized the learning theories, development theories in their answers, even better than Finnish students. They were also emphasizing certain areas of teacher knowledge more, and, and some of the Finnish students didn't emphasize at all generally how school is organized, what is the school management type, and, and things like that. So we were thinking that, uh, and are thinking that maybe, maybe the, it, was, it was really well implemented, the Finnish model to South African context, through different kind of contextualizing, through different kind of practicing and trial and errors, and, and and, and we, we, should be, we should say that this, this is very success story, we have, what we have done here. For us, it has been also very important. We have recognized some weaknesses in our systems through this kind of common collaboration. Really recognizing that there are still, even we have 40 years experience, challenges to combine theoretical topics and practical things. And what you have done even more successful here. So this kind of common journeys are really important in educational sciences from the point of view of research, from the point of view of development of teacher education and our personal growth. Thank you. Because we are so used to in South Africa, specifically in education, nationally, to say we're not good. And of course we're struggling. But here we learned something that says, yes, people all over the world can and are the same, can do the same and are the same. Our students could, our staff could, our dean, our HOD, our school, our school principal, our teachers could do this in a different way, but as Yari said, somewhat better even in some ways. So I'm not going to respond as an academic only to say this research was such an eye-opener to investigate on a very small grain level, very deeply into young people in our country, 80% of whom come from really difficult conditions for learning, can grow in a program that is only four years old. I mean, that is only four years long. The school is nearly eight years old. That they can learn so much about what you do in practice, how you go about doing it. Could we have done this on our own? Who in this world can work without collaboration? Maybe one big country out there across the Atlantic, but nobody else. <laughs> we need, we need our neighbors. We need our neighbors far away in the north to come with something that is different that speaks to variation theory, to bring to us an idea that we could try to emulate. We struggled, our students struggled, the school struggled, the dean had many nightmares, I can tell you that. The new HOD a few years ago had even more nightmares. I never had a nightmare at all. Because, let me tell you why. Because I am trying at this stage of my life to be a good social scientist. I try to look for evidence, 
I try to look for detail. I try to snivel around on the ground to find out what is going on there with people on the ground in classrooms. What do they say? What do they do? How do they learn? But more than anything, more than anything, the reason that I have never had a nightmare about this is because I've seen integration on a large scale. I've seen integration, and all of this comes from research. None of it comes from my fantasies, of which, of course, as an educationist, I have many. But the research that I have been involved in for the last few years on this cam campus has taught me that kids can, that teachers can, and that we need to be just much more open about the real challenges and about in South Africa, as I'm sure you were many years ago in Finland. Finland also had many centuries of non-independence as a country. I think the, the thing that we need to address quite radically is what is best for all of us but specifically for those young children who run around on these school grounds. As Professor Rensberg intimated this morning, we have to address that elephant in the room. And if you look around, you'll see the elephant is all around us. It's our history. How do we address our history, our broken history of education and of a nation? By looking back, by being now or by looking forward. Research tells us to look ahead like the Finns. Where will our children be in 10 years? Where will they be if they do not know the English terminology, syntax, sounds of the language of science, of the language of technology, the language of mathematics and as one of my proud students, PhD students present here, is uh, advocating for the missing E in STEM. I know you all have put in the A, but we want to put the E back. Where is the opportunity for young children and their teachers to develop an engineering and design thinking mindset? So uh, that's the type of research that makes me not have nightmares. Because if we tackle things as, as social scientists, as educational scientists, if we look for evidence, if we look for small work, small scale work, medium scale work, large scale work, going to scale work, addressing our systemic problems, as, uh, problems of which, as you know, there are very many. But if we do that and keep to science, keep to investigation, keep to validity, keep to reliability, keep to honesty, keeping to good Alpha Kronbachs forever, then I think we are on the right way. And this is why this university and this campus and this flagship gives me pleasurable sleep time at night. It is happening. Research is happening. Um, I cannot thank the University of Helsinki and Professor, Professor Yari Lavonen enough. I can try and say it ditos. That is Finnish for thank you. Uh, I would also like him to say just to me again in Finnish, because if you're old, you don't remember new sounds. So uh, while young people can, which is why we advocate that you should learn the language of maths very early, in the language that you will use to solve the problems. Why do you think our kids can't do word problems well? It's not because they can't do the maths. It's because the language confounds them. Yeah, we must talk. Um, Professor Lovenen, what is the word for renewal of education. Just the word renewal. I'll try and listen. In, in Finnish, uudistaa. Kuulista. Uudistaa. You, uudistaa. Okay, if, you, if kuulista is translated, what does it mean? I am very aware of renewal of energy. Kuulista. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we, we, that Anybody in this room who is a South African and who is not worried about electricity supply, please stand up. <laughs> like we need renewable energy and like we need to renew energy. Personally, I don't think we need the nuclear, but then I'm not a politician. 
if you renew it, you take what is already there and you transform it. So I like this term of renewal instead of reform. Let me quickly tell you why and then I'll stop. I'm a brought and born a Calvinist. That means that I grew up with the ideas of the reformation and Martin Luther and John Calvin and so forth and John Knox across the channel. And so I've always had the idea that reform means that you abolish something which isn't good and then you put something in its place and you put all those theorems on the doors of the cathedral of Wittenberg. Und das geht nur nicht so. Renewal for me is what the 21st century is telling us. It is to change what is already there, to transform it, not to reform it. So I want to keep abolish in our research work this term reformation or reforming of education. I want to say renewal, getting the real energy, putting it in a different format and getting it from the sun and into the hearts and minds of our kids, our university students and our beloved Department of Basic Education. Here speaks a loyal South African.